Hi, I'm Celine. Um, today, let's learn something about the Holy Bible. Let's pray first. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your blessings. Thank you so much for every beautiful thing that is happening in our life. And all the difficulty in our life, because we are shaped by these difficulties, and that's how we can become who we are right now. And we need you. And we need you, Holy Spirit. We pray that you will fill us. And please overflow in us. And Holy Spirit, we need your wisdom. We need your guidance. We need your anointing. We need your power. And Jesus, our Savior, thank you so much for dying for us on the cross. We know we don't we don't deserve it, but you still did it for us. And you are resurrected now, and it's time for us, all of us, to repent, and come back to you, turn our hearts to you. It's the end time, and you're coming back so soon. So we pray that your glory will shine upon us. We want to see your glory. Your revival, all these beautiful transformations that will happen on this earth. People have never seen this before. The biggest revival, which is on the way, and we are the generation who are so blessed because we will see it with our physical eyes. And also our spiritual eyes, and Yeshua, our Savior. Today, I pray that you will let my mouth to speak whatever you want. And we love you. We thank you. We want to keep worshiping you. You deserve all the praises. Thank you. And everything we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. Okay, thank God.、Um, I have something really interesting from the Lord, and I want to share with everyone.、Um, you know what is happening right now on Earth? It's not. Easy for all of us. When you turn on the news, you will see the bad news everywhere, and almost in every nation. And you will also see so many supernatural signs in the earth, and so different from before. And these are the signs. Which are showing us that Jesus is returning, and the judgment is upon this earth, and we need to repent. Every one of us, we need to. If you don't repent to God, it's okay. It's your choice, but. You may lose your ticket going to the heaven, and don't blame anyone. Blame yourself, because heaven is so real, and it is eternal. When you get there, you will have eternal peace and joy. But if you don't get it, 
then the hell is waiting for you, which is eternal, dark, painful. I hope nobody will go there. That's why we need Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah. We need Him, and we need His precious blood to wash us clean, to remove all of our sins, our sins. So here, let's go to Leviticus chapter. Twenty, chapter twenty. Here we will see the penalties for sinning. Our God told Moses that how he would punish the people of Israel. Who sin against God, and you will see. God said clearly, He will cut off them, and He will stone them with stones. How horrible it is, right? When the judgment comes to you, you're gonna lose your life, not only on earth, also in eternal kingdom. Because God hates sin. That's evil. And in verse eight, let me read it. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am the Lord, which sanctify you. God wants us to keep His commandments. The reason is He wants us to be holy, as holy as He is, and He wants to purify us. He doesn't want us to look like the Gentiles, full of evilness. No. God wants us to be white as snow. So God was talking to the children of Israel, and not also the strangers, sojourn in Israel. God hates sin. But now look, nowadays look at the church all over the world, especially here in America. Look at these pastors. Look at these Christian, Christians. I mean.、Um, So-called Christians, look at them. What they are doing in the church is so shameful. We need to repent because if we don't, then the judgment is on the way. So here, let's go to Genesis. Chapter thirty-four. This is a story about Dinah. Who is Dinah? She was the only daughter of Jacob. Jacob had twelve sons, and Dinah was the only one. I guess she probably was so spoiled by her family. She probably was a very innocent girl because she didn't have any sister. All of the family members are brothers, and they must have loved her so much. That's why Dinah didn't understand how to protect her. That's why she got hurt at that time. At that time, all the family of Jacob were living in the land of Canaan. 
That's written in the Genesis chapter thirty-three, verse eighteen. That was the promised land, right? God promised to Abraham. To all the Israel people, but look at what happened. Dinah went out to see the daughters of the land. She was so curious. Um, what do these daughters of the land look like? Because Dinah probably was so different from them, and she was curious. And her curiosity let her pay the price, because she met Shechem, the son of Hamor, the high Hivite, prince of the country. He was the prince of the country. He got very high、um, position. In his country, and he liked her. I guess for other girls, they probably would be so excited. But for Dinah, it was a disaster because she got defiled before marriage. They were not supposed to be together, and nobody was. Protecting her, and basically she was raped by the prince of that country, and then it brought a huge storm in that land because her brothers wanted to revenge for her. And they deceive the, the people there to be circumcised, so that they had a chance to kill all of these male. This is a very sad story. Here, verse twenty-five, it said, "Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came upon the city boldly, and slew all the males." Do you know why it happened? Because these people, they defiled Dinah. Only one girl cost the almost the life of the whole city. One girl equals so many males' life. God was so mad. That Dinah got defiled. If it happened on any other girl, it's okay. But it happened on Dinah, the one who was so spoiled, so spoiled in his family. Got defiled, and God was so angry. Let me tell you the secret. The Hebrew meaning of the name Dinah is judgment. When Dinah got defiled, the judgment came to the whole country. God doesn't like sin, especially to his precious daughter, the only one among twelve. Brothers, and 
when um, she she Shechem, he wanted Dinah to be his wife, <clears throat> and look at um verse twelve. He even wanted to offer dowry gifts, lots of material things, to have this marriage, but do you really think? He is so generous. No. <clears throat> no. Here is the answer. Verse twenty-one to verse twenty-three. <clears throat> Let me read it. This is what Shechem talked to all the people, the men of their city. He said. These men, these men are、um, Jacob's family. These men are peaceable with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade therein, for the land, behold, it is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. He's trying to exchanging. The girls,、um, for each other to be their wives. And verse twenty-two, only hearing, will the men consent unto us, for to dwell with us, to be one people, if every male among us be circumcised, as they are circumcised. Verse twenty-three. Shall not their cattle and their substance and every beast of theirs be ours? Only let us consent unto them, and they will dwell with us. What he really wanted was not only the girl Dinah; he also wanted the money. He wanted the money of these. Israel people, the money of God. He wanted the Gentiles and the chosen ones to be one people, and he wanted money. You know, he represented the devil, Satan, and God told us, Satan always represents. You know, like a bright angel. When you see the devil, he will not let you know that he is devil at the first sight. You you meet him. No, he will, you know, just act like a、um, somebody who is nice. You know, I want to get married with a daughter, and I will give you money. So you will be deceived. And once you agree with it, and then all of your money will go to his pocket. This is his. Purpose. This is the devil's purpose. This is Satan's purpose. Thank God. God's chosen people. They don't buy it. They don't believe it. And they killed them. The judgment came to this land. And they didn't have any circumcised before until they were asked to have it, and then they got killed. Being circumcised here means you agree to God and you agree to be His chosen people. That's a sign. At that time. I guess it should be very painful for men, but you know what? The real, the real sign is you circumcise yourself in your heart, in your spirit, in your soul. And these people, these Gentiles, living. In the land of Canaan, 
They agreed doing it, but they didn't want it in their hearts. They just want to use it to deceive the chosen ones because they wanted their money and their beautiful daughters. God can see through everything, and He. Always talks to his people, like how he told Jacob's family the truth. Because the spiritual people can see through everything. We see things in our spiritual eyes, not our physical eyes only. So Dinah, whose name means. Judgment. Finally, God used her to bring judgment in the land. Be careful with God's people, because you may bring judgment into your life. And Dinah, when I look at this story, when I was reading it. I think this girl was so special. It should have some special meaning behind it, not only judgment only. And she reminds me of Zion, the daughter of Jerusalem. So precious, the only one, only one daughter. There's so many secrets in the Bible. So many, and God is revealing them one by one. And let's go to Micah chapter four. Micah. Let's see here. It talks about the mountain of the Lord, which is Zion. Let's read verse two. And many nations shall come and say, "Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God." Of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his path. For the law shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Here, the law sh- shall go forth of Zion. It means come out of. Zion, Zion, Zion. She will teach you the law. And verse three. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords in the plowshares. And the spears, into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. This is a very important verse. First, we see God says He's gonna judge. Among many people, many nations, judgment, judgment. You see, the meaning of Dinah are related to Zion. God will judge people because of Zion. God judged the land of Canaan because of Dinah. And here we also see. 
Nation shall not shall not lift up a sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. There will be no sword, no war. There will be peace. That's written in the Bible. In the end time, yes, the judgment is coming. But God's house, Zion, will have peace. The chosen ones will have peace in Christ. And let's read verse eight. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion. Unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. The kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. This sentence, if we use another、um, NIV version to do the translation, from Hebrew to English, it means former dominion will be restored. To you, it is talking about restoration of Zion. It will be a big, huge, the biggest restoration to Zion. We will see it. And verse ten. Let's see. This is also very interesting. Let's read it,、um, word by word, phrase by phrase. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Like a woman in travail, for now shall thou go forth out of the city. Okay. Um, let's see. Here, go forth out of the city. That means leave the city. When Dinah got defiled, Jacob was so panic, and he wanted to bring his whole family, his whole household, out of the land. Just like this, go forth out of the city, you see. And next, and thou shalt dwell in the field. Keep reading, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered, saved by the Lord. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. Who do you remember? Recall right now. When I'm reading the verse, who went to Babylon and got delivered and got redeemed? Who? Esther, another important girl in the whole Bible. Esther. They went to Babylon because that that was God's plan, and God used this Jewish girl to deliver the whole people of Israel, the whole nation, and everyone had to respect them. In the end, 
That is a restoration and redemption. Dina was defiled. It represents Zion was destroyed, but God will rebuild Zion, just like how He did to Esther. Esther means restoration. The restoration of God's house. So this is very very interesting. When you read Bible, you need to connect each chapters. So many things are so related. That's why you need to ask God for His wisdom. Without His wisdom, the the Holy Bible is just a book. It's just knowledge. But this is God's life, living words. He's talking to you through His words, through His life. That's why I like reading Bible because it's so amazing. Each time I read it, I got new revelation from the Lord. And here, let's read verse eleven. Now, also many nations are gathered against thee and say, "Let her." Be defiled, and let our eye look upon Zion. Look at what is in the enemy's brain, the enemy's thoughts, the enemies, our enemy, wants to defile. Zion. Not only before, even now. He wants us to be like him, the devil, so that we cannot go to heaven. He wants to defile us. He wants, he wants us to be dirty. Just like him. He wants to destroy Zion. God. Let this happen. Allow this happen. But God will wash Zion clean and restore Zion, and redeem Zion, deliver Zion. That's the coming revival from heaven. And also verse thirteen. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass. Here, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, many nation. Here, many people means many nations. All over the world, and I will consecrate their gain, their substance, their money unto the Lord, and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. You see the power, the authority God puts in Zion is huge, almighty. Amazing, great, wonderful, perfect. Because God wants to use Zion to beat the enemy. Oh, this is so interesting. This is really so interesting. You know, suddenly, it reminds me of this verse, Genesis three. 
chapter three, verse fifteen here. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That is what God told the serpent when Eve sinned against God. Woman. And the devil are enemies. God wrote it in the beginning of the Holy Bible, and here it's still happening. Zion will beat the enemy. And God will let enemy to bow down before Him and bring money to support the church. That doesn't mean prosperity gospel. It's not. It is God's glory. God wants to show His glory through everything, including money. That's blessing to the church, and that should happen. Because it's written in the Bible. Because these things, when God first created them, they didn't belong to the devil. It's for God's glory. And God said, you know, the Lord. He he described him the Lord. Of the whole earth. Now we say, the Lord of the world is the devil. He will no longer be the Lord of the world. Come on, our God is the Lord of everywhere, everywhere. When Jesus put himself on the cross. The devil has no authority in everything. We should remember it. And here, there is another chapter. Also, gives us confirmation. And let's go to、um, Isaiah chapter sixty. I love this chapter. I love it so much because every time, every time when I read it, I see hope. I see how beautiful our God is. No matter how horrible you were before, it doesn't matter because when you put your faith in God, you chase Him, you seek Him. You want yourself to be holy, pure. He will restore you, redeem you, deliver you. He will do the transformation, the permanent transformation in your life that the devil cannot steal anymore. Understand? In Isaiah chapter sixty, every word is so beautiful. You may read it later. And I just want to focus on.、Um, I want to focus on fourteen. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee, and all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, 
the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Look at what our enemy would do. They're gonna bow down to Zion. Isn't it interesting? When they bow down to Zion, that represents they bow down to the Lord. That's like we just talked about in Micah um, chapter 4. Yes, Zion will be totally restored. And she will be the enemy. She will beat the enemy. And the enemy will bow down to her. And the whole Isaiah chapter 60 is talking about how, how glorious the house of the Lord will be. Yes, the judgment is coming. Coming to the whole earth, including God's house. But we also will see God's true, real, revival, glory, light coming to his true church. The wheat and the tares are growing together. The true Christian, authentic Christians and the fake Christians are sitting together in the church. You don't know who they really are. They may not know who they really are either. But our Lord knows who is His real church. Do you understand? And it also reminds me of this verse. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 9. Let me read it. <clears throat> Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. This is the church in Philadelphia. How interesting it is. God will let the enemy to bow down to his real church, which represents God himself, our Jesus. Whew. This is so interesting. <clears throat> you see, the devil lie. <laughs> the devil does all kinds of evilness, but God <laughs> will let them bow down to his church himself. <laughs> it is so interesting. God is so amazing. We see bow down here. You know, worship before thy feet. And also bow down here. Isaiah chapter 60, 14. And there are also two people in the Bible. And God used, wow, like the enemy, um, people will bow down to them. One is Joseph, one is Judah, the two brothers. And we will talk about these topics later on. Um, so I want to tell God's people, whatever you are going through in your life, don't give up hope. God is using the waiting season to equip us. I know the devil's laugh is so loud sometimes, you know, even for me. 
too loud. The devil wants us to give up, to cry, to deny God, to forget about God's promises. But we say no, because our future is so bright. That is written in the Bible. Every word that is written in the Bible will be fulfilled. So we need to keep praying for the revival. We will see it. It is happening. And all of a sudden, it will be like nuclear bomb ex- exposed. Huge. So light. Every color of this world will see it. Even if our enemy, <laughs> they will see it. And I also want to tell um, people um, who are not Christians yet, give your life to Jesus. Trust in Him. Because the only one who can protect you in the end time is Christ, Yeshua, Messiah. And thank you. Thank God. Thank God so much for letting me doing my preaching in English. Yes,、yeah, the first time. And it, English is not, is not my first language, but it doesn't matter. When I'm having faith in God, I know I can do every good thing in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a nice day. Bye.